On Acoustic Tuesday, episode 23, you're gonna learn about a plethora of acoustic music masters. We're gonna hear from our bearded brother reporting from the front lines on a hot acoustic guitar topic, and we're gonna explore Taylor Guitar's newest innovation. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode 23. And I feel comfort today because, well, I'm joined by the flannel wearing Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first, and of course, Levi Kuila, the man with the technical plan. Hello, Noah. Levi. Gentlemen. Tony. Tony. It's a uh, treat to see you both today. This is, this is a whole bunch of fun. This is. And, this, is uh, a, this is a riot. And we should subscribe. It's a regular riot. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me on track. Of course, <laughs> I don't want you to miss an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. So the easiest way to not miss an episode is to go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And when you do so, please click that little bell so you get notified of each and every new video. And of course, if you want it delivered directly to your email, just click the link in the description, go ahead and sign up, and then you'll have full-blown access to my Guitar Geek list, which of course you do not want to miss, especially if you're a guitar geek. And that's what Acoustic Tuesday is. Is all about is waving your guitar geek flag and just loving all things guitar geek and of course to kick acoustic tuesday off i do have a tradition for us which happens to be our guitar geek trivia and here is your trivia question for the day which minnesota guitar maker in his first two and a half years of building made 78 guitars for a local music distributor who later had to clear them out by selling them well below their cost due to their lack of name recognition and sales i'm going to read that one more time which minnesota guitar maker in his first two and a half years of building made 78 guitars for a local music distributor who later had to clear them out by selling them well below their cost due to the lack of name recognition and sales was it A, Charles Hoffman, B, James Olson, C, Adam Wilson, or D, Tim Reed? Go ahead and ponder that while I dive into the guitar geekiness that is Acoustic Tuesday. And of course, speaking of guitar geekiness, I have an announcement before my normal guitar geek items today, and it happens to be the Acoustic Life Festival which of course is happening June 22nd and June 23rd here in Bozeman, Mon Montana. <laughs> here in Bozeman, Montana, and it will slowly, actually, well, it won't slowly, it's only two days, it will very quickly transform to the epicenter of guitar geekdom. And I don't want you to miss it, so please, please get your tickets for the Acoustic Life Festival. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to AcousticLifeFestival.com. And if there are any left, they will show up on that page. So again, that's June 22nd and June 23rd is when the Acoustic Life Festival will be. It's going to be beautiful here in Bozeman, Montana, and I want you to join us. So go to AcousticLifeFestival.com and see if there are any tickets available. Moving into the guitar geekiness, starting with item Tony. number five. Did you have something for me, Levi? Sorry. I did. Yeah. You didn't? You did, did you know I didn't. that yesterday we opened up public enrollment for Tony's Acoustic Challenge? I forgot about that, actually. <laughs> only like Thank the you biggest for reminding thing me. in the world for us ever. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So yesterday started the four-day window uh, to become a Tony's Acoustic Challenge member, meaning you can go to Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com and if it looks like something you're interested in, if it resonates with you, if you want to be a guitar geek and have an exercise to play every single day, uh, please, I would encourage you to become a member. That window is only going to be open until February 1st. And this is our first ever public enrollment. So it's, it's super, super exciting. It's coinciding with our 10-day challenge. There's so much going on. On, it's really truly hard to keep it straight so thank you Levi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah that's true <laughs> did i cover all the bases there well no i just i mean there's really three bullet points and I, I actually we didn't talk about this before no but the acoustic life festival like did you also review the what's guitars happening for vets Scenario. No, I didn't, that, but I can. That also is like the biggest thing in the world that's ever yeah, happened. Yeah, let me, re let so me rewind. I, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, earlier in, uh, on Acoustic Tuesday, I announced that uh, this year, 
that I was very uh, grateful for this, but I, I've been able to become a, an ambassador for the Guitars for Vets program. It's a nonprofit program that really helps people with uh, the healing power of music, uh, particularly vets that are coming back, uh, using, it, uh, using music and playing guitar as therapy, as kind of a, a, a way to uh, um, ease back into normal life and cope with some, some serious things. And I know that for, for a fact that music and playing the guitar has helped me through a ton of stuff. Uh, so working with this organization is, is really a dream come true. And, it, and it's really amazing to, to help pay it forward and, 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 and unite guitar geeks on behalf of, of music as a healing power. So the cool thing about the Acoustic Life Festival, which I totally forgot to mention, uh, was that, was that uh, all the proceeds from the Acoustic Life Festival are going towards guitars for vets uh, to, again, help pay it forward and to really um, just propel their message and their whole uh, philosophy, which I think is amazing. It's, you know, they're, they're using the guitar to have fun and enrich and, 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 and have this feeling of fulfillment in everyday lives. And it's, it's just, a, they're doing great work and I'm super happy to be working with them. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Again, uh, AcousticLifeFestival.com. If there are any tickets left, they will be there. And of course, the Tony's Acoustic Challenge membership window running from January 28th. 9th yesterday through February 1st. So have those both on your radar. Now, Levi, can I yeah. can I jump yeah. in? <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> okay. Starting with item number 5. Now, uh, uh, acoustic guitars and pedal boards aren't necessarily always used in the same sentence. They don't have the relationship that, say, peanut butter and jelly does. It doesn't have the 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 relationship that, say, I don't know, cheese and crackers does. They have okay. a good relationship. Uh, what I'm trying to say is normally we don't associate pedals with acoustic guitar, but LR Bags is on course to go ahead and fix your perception of that. Uh, they just released, I want to make sure I get the name right, their suite of Align Series acoustic pedals. Now this, can, this consists of a session, compression and saturation pedal, an equalizer, a reverb, and an acoustic DI, which is super, super exciting. Um, just very briefly, since the whole Nam hullabaloo is kind of coming to a, 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 the dust is settling a little bit, I've had a chance to start digging into the products that that were released at Nam. This happens to be uh, one of them. Uh, these happen to be one of them, uh, some of them, and um, they really uh, did a great job on the aesthetic of the pedal. And as far as all the reviews that I've read thus far, uh, videos and examples, they're pretty amazing. In fact, I have a video here for you, uh, just giving you a quick glimpse at what these pedals can do. So let's have a listen. Thank you. 
All right, so that was the Align Series uh, Pedal Suite by LR Bags. Now they have since updated their site, so there's an individual video breakdown on each of those pedals. So if you wanna go visit that, go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com, click on episode 23, you'll find a link right there. And according to their website, it looks like they will, they will start shipping those in March of 2018, uh, which is right around the corner. So that's pretty darn exciting. Moving on to item number four. Now, buying a vintage guitar is something that, well, I could say that could be a little bit stressful or a little bit scary. I know for a fact, uh, myself, I always was, was hesitant on vintage guitars because I didn't know their story. I didn't know their history. I didn't know what lurked underneath the top of the guitar. Now, in past episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I showed actually how to look inside an acoustic guitar, so make sure to check those out. Uh, you can find that at AcousticTuesdayShow.com. I want to say that was episode 20, Noah, maybe? Which one? Episode 20, the uh, the mirror, the inspection mirror one. Ah, uh, yes. When I featured this little buddy. Mm-hmm which I keep in my desk drawer. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, buying a vintage guitar can be scary because you just don't know the story and you don't know the, what happened to the guitar, what may have happened to the guitar, which is why I want to feature uh, item number four, which is the Low Vintage Guitar Company. Now, I subscribed to their uh, their Facebook page, or I like their Facebook page, and I just kept getting fed these amazing pictures of vintage guitars, which prompted me to go to their website, and then I was just inundated with with... Uh, really stellar pictures of some primo, I'm talking just flawless examples of pure vintage guitar beauty. Old Martins, old Gibsons, really cool old Nationals, old Banjo, I mean, it's it's all it's all there. Uh, and I just wanna highlight this company because I love their story. Um, it's run by a father and son, Ed and Will Lowe. They also have a luthier on board, David Shepard, who has 40 years of experience, which means a lot when you're considering a vintage guitar. And these guys really, truly special specialize in vintage guitars. Uh, they're located in Burlington, North Carolina. And uh, they've been voted uh, uh, one of the NAM top 100 dealers for three consecutive years. So kudos to those guys for just doing a killer job. Uh, but please check out their website. They've got, they're always updating their inventory. My favorite thing to do is to log on and just click on, uh, I think they have a new arrivals session section. I believe that's correct. Uh, just click on new arrivals and just get ready to, to just drool all over your computer keyboard. And they also, I want to highlight their, um, their YouTube channel. They have uh, some really really stellar, stellar uh, uh, guitar reviews. I'm talking, you get to actually hear what a 41D18 sounds like. You get to hear what a 33L00 sounds like. Uh, in fact, there's one here that, uh, one review that I've been watching closely, uh, which is uh, Presley Barker playing a uh, pre-war guitar company, Triple O. So let's go ahead and have a listen to uh, Presley play that guitar. Okay, so that was Presley Barker playing a, a, a triple O guitar. I believe it's a triple O 18 guitar from pre-war guitar company. And anyways, the guitar sounds great. Um, Presley does a lot of their uh, flat picking reviews, kind of their vintage guitar reviews. And he's, he's maybe, I don't know, maybe 13 now. He's a, just a monster player. Uh, but all their guitar reviews th done by various members of their staff and um, uh, also their mandolin reviews, everything's great. So please, please check out Low Guitar Company, Low Vintage Guitar Company. Um, they're, uh, uh, really, they're, their website's a, uh, just a wealth of information, so make sure to check those guys out. Now, I've got to uh, share with you what I've been listening to this week, which is, um, well, there's a lot of new discoveries to be made there. Plus, we get to hear from our bearded brother, so it doesn't get much better than that, except for actually it does. Item number one is pretty amazing. But we have to check into the mailbag, uh, which is, is really occupying 
like a, a four foot space next to my desk. Uh, so I'm gonna start with a nice, nice box we got from Russ H who sent us some of his favorite uh, distilled spirits. We're looking at uh, Sonoma County Distilling Company's uh, Kentucky Bourbon, which is, uh, I, I mean, I'm assuming, and according to the instructions in the letter, I'm assuming it's, it's for me. So you I'm gonna would go be ahead right. and leave that there. And then- <laughs> I don't think, no, no instruction was required on and that. And then he also <laughs> sent, I believe it's the same company, I'm not 100% sure, St. George, uh, uh, another California distillery, uh, single malt whiskey for the Scotch lovers, uh, both Noah and Levi. And it looks like, Noah, are you, had, had you tapped into this? I have. That's, and I'm drinking that as we speak. Tell me about oh, it. Oh, really? Tell you about it? It's got a dragon on it and a shield, so I knew you'd totally be into it. And that's why it's good. That, <laughs> For no other reason. I told no you, I'm, a label. Reason. I'm a label guy. No, I know. This is good. This is my first time having it. And so I'm not, I, I still want to sit with it some more. Okay. But my initial thoughts, you know, it's not peated. Okay. Um, it's, I'm enjoying this so good. far. I like good. it. Hmm. Yeah. Any, any notes? Any notes? All? Yeah. Anything to? Well, yes. Normally when you don't. <laughs> Floodgates open. <laughs> Let me just say this. When okay. you're not peated, um, it, it tends to go a little more florally. Okay. But then mm. it also has mm. to do with the type of barrel that, mm. you know, that the whiskey is coming from as well. Um, so it's definitely more floral. Okay. Um, little sweetness. Okay. Tad, like maybe a, I don't know. How would you describe it? Hazelnut? Uh very good. Okay. Roasted hazelnut. Not good job. Noah. Whoa! Did you read that? <laughs> Bam! He read no it. Way. He read it. Don't let him. I read it. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have? Okay. So, uh, uh, TAC member, Acoustic Tuesday viewer, a musician extraordinaire, Maggie sent us uh, a really wonderful care package. Let me first say the um, barrel aged uh, whiskey coffee, which there were originally three bags. However, we're down to about one and a half. Uh, so she sent that. It's 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 truly uh, it's really some magic stuff. Um, and then she sent along, just for Levi, Noah, and I when we have game nights, the uh, the Bob Ross Art of Chill <laughs> game. So she went ahead and sent that along. Which as soon as I uh, uh, opened the package, I I was cracking up immediately. Uh, so thank you for that, Maggie. Um, I also did a little Reverb LP binging, if you will. So I just wanted, you know, I featured Reverb LP, I think last episode, Acoustic, uh, Acoustic Tuesday episode 22. Uh, I ordered some albums, some John Fahey albums, um, a live one, and then another one. Um, and they come packaged really quite well. This, per this These particular albums came from Wax Artifacts in Chicago via Reverb LP and uh, beautiful packaging. Just wonderful, a treat to work with. And then I also ordered uh, almost all of the John Hartford albums I could find from, wet, uh, from Wax Artifacts, again, through Reverb LP. So those are all here. Uh, the packaging is amazing. The shipping was easy, super easy to uh, to um, to go through it. Just, just to, um, yeah, I'm pretty pumped about this. Can you just flip through and give us some? Yeah, so I got uh, uh, I got to pull out because the receipts are in front. I just got these. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, John so Hartford, nobody reason. knows what you do. I got Mark Twang. I got uh, what's this one? I forgot what this one was. This is uh, Iron Mountain Depot, and then of course I got uh, what's the other one that I got? Heading down into the mystery below, uh, and they also sent. Check this out. Really cool. Uh, uh, cork mat for my turntable. So, nice. Uh, yeah, pretty stoked and want to say thank you to Reverb LP and Wax Artifact in Chicago. Um, and this was one that Levi was really excited about. See what I mean? There's a lot of mailbag stuff today. Uh, this one, this one here contained, I'm not going to tell you who it's from yet. This one here contained uh, Crunchy Cheetos. It contained uh, a plethora <laughs> of mini cow pie dark chocolate candy bars. It contained a, uh, a various assortment of uh, um, Wisconsin-infused uh, postcards. It also contained uh, some little chocolate Santas, and it also contained some, some beer-flavored kettle chips. come on. Uh, it Whoa. also contained a Uper bar. What is and that? last but certainly not least, it contained some raffle tickets for Levi and a poster <laughs> of the um, the Wasaki Lions Club annual meat raffle. Yes, uh, and this one actually came 
from from uh, my folks who live in northern Wisconsin. And Levi has long been fascinated with um, meat raffles. They're kind of Midwestern lore and myth, if you will. Uh, so, so that's why that was all sent. So thank you for everybody. Thank you to my folks, uh, mom and dad, uh, Maggie, uh, Russ H, and the folks at Wax Artifact in Chicago. Um, for just probably the most abundant mailbag that has ever been experienced. It's amazing. And, I, you know, like Maggie, the the coffee, it's crazy. But your dad, I think we determined, because this is a care package, but there's been weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of text messages oh. <laughs> that you get from him. Yeah. And, and so I think we determined that his new job is like all day just – hunting for meat raffles, meat raffles to send a picture or <laughs> yeah so funny thing is so so my dad went specifically to this meat raffle to get tickets for levi as a joke and to tend to grab the poster well it turns out he actually won some shrimp and some steak so that's kind of a kind of a win-win a double whammy uh so we're expecting the shrimp and the steak dad please uh, go ahead and uh, send that when you can <laughs> Make sure to use plenty of dry ice. Uh, <laughs> moving on, let's get back into the acoustic guitar okay. geekiness. Uh, and, and truly, thank you for everybody uh, contributing to the mailbag. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, moving to item number three, which happens to be what I'm listening to this week. And, and, and if you want to get a master class, uh, a wide sampling, a wide-ranging sampling of acoustic music masters, you need to know about the transatlantic sessions. Here's some names for you. This is just a, a, a mere fragment of who's involved with the transatlantic sessions. Uh, Jerry Douglas, Sam Bush, Bela Fleck, Russ Berenberg, Julie Fowlis, Sarah Jaros, Daryl Scott, Amos Lee, Joan Osborne, Bruce Molsky, among others. I want to say Edgar Meyer is in there as well. Um, I'm talking, oh, Alison Krauss. Uh, how could I forget Alison Krauss? Uh, Sierra Hall, I believe, was on one. Dan Tominsky. Anyways, the list goes on and on and on. It is, it is a masterclass in acoustic musicians, and it's called the Transatlantic Sessions. Essentially, uh, masters of acoustic music from the U.S. go across the pond and record with masters of acoustic music. I believe, I want to say it's in Ireland or Scotland. I'm not 100% sure, but they recorded a castle or at least some of the videos that I saw uh, has them at a castle, which I thought would excite Noah, but he's, he's very, in, he's in, intense over there right now. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm paying attention to many things. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> you're a man that wears many hats, so I'll let you do what you do. Just, just know that they recorded in a castle. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> anyway, some, some really, truly uh, uh, amazing combinations of, of musicians uh, happen. And, and there's one selection that, that I want you to be aware of, and that is uh, it's, called, it's a tune called The Blackest Crow. It's in a traditional tune uh, with Bruce Molsky, Julie Fowlis, Jerry Douglas, and I want to say I think Edgar Meyer's on bass. I'm not 100%, but I don't have to know because you can hear it right here, right now. So let's go ahead and have a listen to uh, the Transatlantic Sessions.
right, so that was the Transatlantic session, Sessions. That particular session featured Bruce Molsky, Julie Fallis, Jerry Douglas, amongst others. Uh, but really, truly, any of the albums or DVDs, because they offer them as DVDs as well, um, gives you the widest offering of really amazing musicians. In fact, this, this series alone, I want to say Jerry Douglas is the one that's kind of continuing the legacy, but this series, is a, this series alone is responsible for me discovering just a ton of musicians. So a uh, huge thank you to Jerry Douglas for, for doing this and, and kind of being the, the, uh, the momentum behind keeping that alive, if that is the case, uh, whomever is behind it keeping it alive. I, I really appreciate it. And there's just a ton of music in there waiting for you to discover. So please check those out. Uh, you can find them on YouTube. You can find them on uh, uh, Amazon amongst other places. And of course, if you want a direct link to that, just go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com. Episode 23, you'll be able to find it there. Now, we have to hear from our, our reporter on the front lines. It's coming up. It's coming up, Noah. It's almost happening. I'm waiting. But wait no more. Well, we actually, you'll have to wait just a little bit. <laughs> you, you, however, I want, I want to hear some small wins. Right. So let's, let's do, do this. All right. So uh, small wins coming in from last week's episode. Uh, Fred has to say, I have looked for a copy of one album for years. Earl Scruggs and the Earl Scruggs Review live at Kansas State. Oh, cool. After watching AT Episode 21, I searched Reverb's LP site and found it. Yeah. Oh, that's that is awesome. awesome. <laughs> he says, Randy Scruggs' guitar, like Earl's banjo, blew me away. The vinyl album arrived today. It is in near mint condition. Cellophane still on the jacket. It is in better condition than my original copy, which disappeared at least 35 years ago. Thanks for sharing the link. I haven't missed a single episode of AT. Awesome. Thanks, Fred. Congratulations on your musical uh, discovery, or rather rediscovery. Uh, however you want to word that. I don't know how you'd word that. Sorry, I keep going. It's no. okay. <laughs> uh, Mark has to say, small win, finally caught up on Acoustic Tuesday, and after years of struggling with injuries from my time in the Marines... I'm back to playing and taking lessons every day. Thanks for the inspiration and geek on. Hell yeah, geek on. Nice, nice work. Or would it be like, hua, hua? geek on. Hua. Yeah, hua. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, last small win for today I'm going to share, and I get it, <clears throat> being on YouTube and being on the interweb and stuff, uh, this is by Video Services. Okay. Okay? That's, <laughs> the, that's their moniker. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> small win, I don't know how I found you. But I enjoy you all. You've given me direction as I try to learn how to play guitar. Got my first guitar for Christmas, a black Ibanez VC70. Awesome. Congratulations. Fantastic. Good yeah. small wins. Good round. Right? Really, ri yeah, really, nice. really kind of ranging through the whole deal. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if you want your small win featured on an Acoustic Tuesday show, all you have to do is in the comments below, put hashtag small win and describe your small win. It could be a record that you found and, and ordered. It could be a concert that you went to, an artist that you discovered, you changed your strings for your first time, you finally got the F chord, whatever the case may be, please share your small win with us. We love sharing small wins because it kind of keeps this positive momentum going. And it it just it, they're just fun to read it, it really is it's a treat to hear those it's outstanding noah does a great job of picking them so make sure to uh challenge noah and get your small win in there um make yes. it hard for him to select only three or four <laughs> uh, uh moving on speaking of hashtags and things We've, we've done this segment two times before, and it's been fantastic, full of information. And, of course, whenever you get to talk to a bearded friend, it's, it's like uh, it's magic. It's almost like a Disney movie, you know, when one bearded guy gets to talk to another bearded guy. You know, it's funny you say that because you mentioned the Transatlantic Sessions, yeah. which has Julie Fallis. Yeah. And you've come in before and have caught me listening Correct. to her. Correct. But not from one of her solo albums. No, what? Wait, I'm not what? following. I'm not following either. And how does the beard? She does not have a beard. She's a very attractive lady. N brave. She, oh, <laughs> come on. Can, can you explain? Yeah. Uh, so is, she's on the Brave soundtrack. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So Noah, can you make the connection? Because I, I don't do the Disney thing very well. Well, there you go. That's the connection. Okay. You, you mentioned okay. beards and Disney, and then we feature Transatlantic. Yeah. Sessions, Julie Fallis. Julie Fallis, who sung on the Brave soundtrack. Correct. From There's Disney. There's apparently some bearded individuals in Brave. Oh, definitely. Okay. Good. I'm glad we came back to bearded individuals. Nice. Uh, Thanks, Noah. Speaking. <laughs> we have a story about Noah's haircut Spe later. <laughs> speaking. Later. Of bearded individuals, uh, 
it's time to ask Matt. Matt's going to touch on a very hot topic in the acoustic guitar industry on, um, well, I'll let, uh, I'll let you hear. Matt, Matt does a good job of summing it up. So here's Matt reporting from the front lines. Happy Acoustic Tuesday, fellow guitar geeks. Matt with Eddie's Guitar is coming to you, as always, from St. Louis, Missouri. Very happy to be back with you folks on another segment of Ask Matt. And we've got a great question today coming in from Ted R. Should you go for a torified top or let time work its magic on any acoustic? Great question, Ted. Um, you know, there, there's absolutely no right or wrong answer to this question at all. It really boils down to personal preference as well as what you expect out of a new guitar. Um, I should start by saying that, you know, for many, many a decade, fine acoustic guitars were built without any mention of torrefaction or the process at all of heat treating wood uh, to sort of age it. Uh, both new and old guitars, there's a lot of great pieces out there, non-torrified, so keep that in mind. Um, uh, it's also worth mentioning if you are looking to get into a torrified top guitar, do not expect to have a instantly 70 or 80 year old vintage sounding instrument right off the bat. Not quite how it works. That's kind of a common misconception, believe it or not. Um, to my right here, I've got a beautiful Boucher OM with a natural non-torrified Adirondack top. Beautiful guitar, great sounding guitar. Uh, and, you know, specifically with Adirondack and some of the other spruces, Adirondack being among the stiffest, um, it's somewhat common knowledge that it may take a while for the guitar to quote unquote play in, meaning it might take a while before you start hearing the guitar develop in its voice and, and gain more warmth, more sweetness, uh, a little bit of blooming in the overtones and just overall harmonic complexity of the guitar. Uh, a guitar like this might take a little while to sort of start getting to that point to where you can audibly hear some changes in the sound. To my left here is a gorgeous Dana Bourgeois with a torrified top. Um, and uh, something to expect from a guitar like this uh, that is kind of surprising, especially when we first started stocking a lot of torrified top guitars, how rapidly, even an Adirondack top that's been torrified, how rapidly they begin to change and their sound does develop pretty quickly. Uh, I've, I've witnessed it in the flesh with guitars I've had in stock here, as well as gotten a lot of similar feedback from customers who have purchased torrified top guitars that they change quickly. They start to play in quickly. It's kind of an accelerated break-in time, it seems like. While it doesn't sound like a vintage guitar immediately the first time you open the case, it does begin to develop that direction quite a bit more quickly than a non-torrified guitar. Uh, so kind of an interesting aspect there. And as important as anything that I've mentioned already, tonally speaking, between the two are there differences. And I found some pretty consistent differences um, between very similar guitars. And I'm talking same builder, same tone wood, same body shape and size, same bracing pattern. Uh, if you have all of those things relatively equal, but a torrified top versus a non-torrified top, um, there are some differences for sure right off the bat. It seems like the torrified guitars generally have a little bit drier sound and response, meaning a uh, little lesser in the overtones, however very strong and pronounced in the fundamentals, uh, which is kind of an interesting side effect, I think, and kind of fun to listen for. Uh, typically, a non-torrified guitar um, you can expect to have a little wetter sound, someone might say. Uh, a little more overtones, a little bit more sparkle up in the top end. Uh, still good fundamentals for sure, typically speaking, but um, not quite as pronounced in the fundamental as the torrified guitar. So something to definitely keep in mind. Like I said, no right or wrong answer here. It's a matter of preference. Uh, and, you know, I, <laughs> I, I get some... Uh, you know, baby boomer customers, guys in their 60s and 70s uh, looking to purchase guitars. I said, man, I need a torrified top. I can't wait, you know, 30, 40 more years for this thing to break in. I don't have that much time. There's some legitimacy to that, actually. Uh, and, and some of the younger players out there, 20s and 30s, you know, if you're going to buy a guitar you plan on having as an heirloom instrument, keep it your whole life. 
You might not necessarily need a torrified top if, if you plan to break it in over the long haul, and there is a lot of rewarding fun in that process too, believe me. So, Ted, thank you again so much for the question. If you have a question of your own, please uh, put hashtag Ask Matt in the comments below. Type your question after, and we will do our best to feature your question in a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Thanks, folks. All right, so that was Matt from Eddie's Guitars down in St. Louis, over in St. Louis, I guess, because we're in Montana. But uh, if you have ever, if you ever have any questions uh, for uh, for Matt, please do so as he instructed in the comments below. And of course, speaking of comments, I want to know what you think of the show so far. Did you make a new discovery? Do you want to make us a new discovery? Are Noah and or Levi and or myself setting a fashion trend that we don't know about? Please put it in the comments below. We'd love to hear it. And of course, speaking of comments, Noah, uh, let's do some shout outs and some, uh, some comments, shall we? Let's do. <laughs> Why, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? I don't know where the whole fashion thing came from. Yeah, yeah, the whole, That's great. yeah. Okay. I mean, I like to think that we're on the cutting edge. Sure, sure, because that, yeah. I mean, Noah's got his gentleman's cut. When the cameras are off. Oh. <laughs> are you, were you laying it up for me? Yeah. I just was, I just was lobbing a pitch at you. That's okay, it. okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Before you get to the comments, Noah. Yes. So, was it yesterday? <laughs> it was yes. It was day three of the live 10-day challenge. Day three of the live 10-day challenge. We just got done. With, no, we hadn't even done it yet, maybe. It was just start. We were like 10 minutes out. Yeah. yeah. And so, Noah's like, okay, guys, I, I got to go for a run with my buddy at 1230. And then at 3.30, I, um, hold on, how does he say this? He's like. I know what I said. He's like, at, and then at 3.30, I have an appointment to get my gentleman cut. <laughs> and Tony and I shoot each other a glance like. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you'd really get on it. And he's like, yeah. And, and, then, I'm, and, and I'm, like, I'm like, dude, it's going to take you like three days to recover. Yeah, like, I'm like minimum. Time, I'm like, the timing's kind of bad on that, don't you think? And Tony's like, yeah, it's not going to take like three days to recover. And Noah's like, no, guys, I'm getting my hair cut. <laughs> and I'm, I'm getting a, a gentle, the, the gentleman cut. So it really threw us for a loop, and we just died laughing. I mean, I was on the floor. I had tears. Yeah, the tears so. were streaming. No, do you have any comments? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was well put. That's That, that was an accurate like recollection of, yeah. of what happened oh, we're yeah. not here to exaggerate i mean <laughs> we're just reporting the facts we will if we can but yeah <laughs> yeah know. right well done well done thank you <sighs> the gentleman cut comes later on <laughs> all right so first of all some shout outs to those who tuned in last week uh to ray tom pat michael ted brandon keith marshall bill scotty randorita mm. and more nice yeah and so, thank you so much for tuning in. And some comments from last week. Randorita had to say, um, and I really like this this uh, comment because you talked about Billy Strings. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, with without a doubt, phenomenal player. Oh yeah. I mean, and she, uh, well, for, I shouldn't assume. Okay. But Randorita says, if you're gonna call yourself Billy Strings, you dang well better be able to deliver. Dot dot dot. He delivers. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I found him about a year ago, and my jaw dropped. Awesome, <laughs> totally great player, fun to watch too. Yeah, super fun to watch. We should get him on the show. Yeah, or mm. something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next comment. Okay, so William, he has to say, "Good show again. I like that you include stuff and things from anywhere." And as I'm in the UK, it was nice to see you co cover not one but two items from over the pond. All right. So thank you. Absolutely. And this last one for today comes from. Steve. And uh, this is what it reads. And, and you could read this a couple different ways, so okay. I'm going to give a shot at both ways. Okay. The way that I think he intended was this. Levi and Noah, just finished watching GG. Awesome. But without proper punctuation, mm -hmm. it could read, Levi and Noah just finished watching GG. Awesome. <laughs> 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 and of course... I mean, they're referring to Golden Grenade. Right. I mean, I'm, in, I'm amongst rock stars here. You guys got to check out Acoustic Tuesday episode 22, AcousticTuesdayShow.com. Click on t episode 22. Uh, Levi Noah's rock band was featured on a local uh, uh, TV program, and they just do an awesome job. I mean, it's not just like a local TV program. It's, it's very, very well done, like Grammy-winning kind of stuff. It's, it's yeah. Not and the sorry. band, but the camera right. crew. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, the production. 
And, <laughs> and because of that, I thought it was okay to include that. Sure. So oh, that, yeah. that comment. Absolutely. Uh, not to mention all the other great comments that come through of just small wins, fam jams. Oh, love it. Um, man, and, and even guys talking more about, uh, you know, guitars for vets stuff. Yeah. Like the small one I shared from the ex-Marine. So cool. Um, awesome. Awesome love stuff. it. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And of course, thank you guys for your comments. Um, as Noah said, we love reading them. It's so much fun. So please make sure to leave a comment below. And of course, uh, uh, comments and, and everything are great, but I want you to also do me a huge favor and share this show with a guitar geek friend of yours. Okay. It just has to be one. Just send them a link. Just be like, hey, check this out. Because the whole notion behind Acoustic Tuesday is to get people together for a half an hour, but generally speaking, an hour, and just geek out. Be guitar geeks together, uh, share the guitar geek love, celebrate small wins, celebrate fam jams, learn stuff. I, 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 the whole notion is to unite guitar geeks, and uh, with your help, it's really happening. Each episode gets more and more views, and it's super fun to see the new viewers pop up, new questions, new comments, etc. So again, please share the show uh, um, at your earliest convenience. Moving to item number one. This is, well, I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna come out and say that this is a turning point in the history of the acoustic guitar. Now, acoustic guitar building, acoustic guitar playing is steeped in tradition. I mean, no doubt about it, you know, when, when, when Martin introduced the X-Brace over 100 years ago, um, it was a major deal. And we've used that as the bracing structure of the acoustic guitar since then. But Taylor Guitars just went ahead and flipped tradition right on its head. I mean, 180 degrees, they, they have redesigned the acoustic guitar bracing system and just introduced their V-class bracing system. And I gotta be honest, my, uh, my, my, my jaw was on the floor when I saw this. When, when a leading guitar company does something like this, it's gonna send out some waves. People are gonna love it, people are gonna hate it. It's very polarizing, but it's very, the whole notion of how Andy Powers and Bob Taylor came together to help develop this bracing uh, uh, um, pattern is, is, is truly inspirational and amazing. So first, I want, to, I want you to take a look at this video that Taylor just released uh, on the kind of the, the, the hows and whys and whats of the bracing design. And, uh, and then I'll give you my thoughts once we come back from the video. So let's have a listen to the uh, video. For more than a century, guitar makers have used the same basic internal architecture to voice the steel string acoustic guitar. And yet generations of builders have all been limited by this design, forced to compromise between two important acoustic properties, volume and sustain. You can't increase one without decreasing the other. Until now. Sometimes, in order to make an impactful change, you have to consider an entirely different approach. Introducing V-Class Bracing. All right, so that was Taylor's new V-Class Bracing. Now, I've done a deep dive on this particular bracing pattern. And just judging by the looks of it and, and, and seeing different uh, artists play the guitar, hearing people talk about it, um, I gotta say, I'm super intrigued. Uh, uh, the, the two long tone bars run essentially parallel to the guitar neck uh, with some uh, supporting tone bars off of those. Even the bridge plate looks a little bit different. Uh, so my curiosity is piqued. And I just want to, I, I want to first say a huge congratulations to both Andy Powers and Bob Taylor for doing something so innovative as this. Again, I think this is one of those things that's going to polarize uh, the acoustic guitar industry. Some people are going to love it and say, this is amazing. Some people are going to hate it and say, how could you do something that was so amazing? Why would you try and reinvent the wheel? But bottom line is they're, they're out there trying and, and pushing forward with innovation. I think Taylor, if one word was to uh, uh, describe Taylor guitars, it would be innovation. Now, my thoughts on the bracing are as follows. Uh, so everything I've heard uh, uh, in terms of artists playing that, I have not had an in-hand experience with the new V-Class bracing, but I am dying to. So Taylor guitars, if you're listening, um, 
I would love to check one of those out. Uh, but beyond that, just, just the, the, the samples that I've heard, um, they seem like very clear, very composed instruments. Okay. It seems as though the high end speaks very clearly. There's very strong string to string separation. Okay, so that's my first initial thought. It seems as though each note within a chord, if you're strumming chords or finger picking chords, rings very clear and very true. Also, because of those longer uh, uh, braces, it seems as though the projection is rather pronounced. It seems as though notes jump off of the top of the guitar and have almost laser focused projection, similar to an arch top guitar, but not quite the same, okay? The same, same characteristic in terms of notes jumping off, but not the same tonal quality. Now, the one thing, the one question that I have, because I don't have an in, in hand experience, is that they say that it's it, it, the, the, the new bracing design uh, provides better intonation. And Noah and I were talking about this earlier, and I, and I said, well, I wonder if that means the top is more reactive and each note speaks clearly with less kind of a vibrational interference. Because my whole notion of intonation was the bridges and saddle, the saddle is here, the nut is here, the frets are spaced accurately down the neck, so the guitar intonates cleanly up the neck. I had no idea that it could involve bracing uh, in any way, shape, or form, but I'm curious. So I have a very specific ask on this very special Acoustic Tuesday, episode 23, Andy Powers. Since you're out there, since you designed this, since this is your baby, and obviously a lot of thought and passion went into this, I would love for you to quickly record a cell phone video explaining how the bracing will impact the intonation. And if I'm right, or if I'm way off, or I just, I guess I'm just curious. The guitar geek in me wants to know. Uh, so Andy Powers, if you're listening, I'm kind of calling you out and putting you on the spot, but I'd love to hear it from the designer's point of view as to how this V-class bracing is helping intonation. If we could get a, a, a quick explanation, uh, all of us guitar geeks here on Acoustic Tuesday would be forever grateful. And of course you would become part of the Acoustic Tuesday family, which we would absolutely love. Cause you, I mean, in terms of guitar geeks, you're, you're pretty much at the top of the heap in my opinion. And just one little detail, Andy. Hey, how's it going? Can you do the horizontal? <laughs> view when you're on the cell phone doing the quick little two minute uh, explanation for us and then we'll put it in the, in the show next yeah. week and just send that over to support at tony so, yeah yeah no i problem. mean i know that this is far reaching but the, you know we're guitar geeks this is a small community andy i hope i hope you watch acoustic tuesday and bob taylor i hope you do too and Chris Martin, I hope you do as well, and you know, everybody. Uh, but, but seriously, I, I'm just curious uh, because this whole thing fascinates me. This new bracing design, um, I'm so intrigued and everything that I've heard, I, I love how the notes just kind of seem to pop off the top of the guitar effortlessly. It's really, uh, um, yeah, I, I can't say enough, you know, how, how amazing it is to take that leap. So kudos to you guys and, and Andy, I can't wait to hear from you. Uh, okay, so moving on to uh, the rest of Acoustic Tuesday, of course, I have to give you your trivia answer. And of course, we have to take a sneak peek into next week. Now, quick review of your trivia question for the day, which was, which Minnesota guitar maker in his first two and a half years of building made 78 guitars for a local music distributor who later had to clear them out by selling them well below their cost due to their lack of name recognition and sales? Was it Charles Hoffman, James Olson, Tim Oh, I'm sorry, I just totally goofed up. <laughs> was it Charles Hoffman, James Olson, Adam Wilson or Tim Reed? And if you answered B, James Olson, you were correct. James Olson, just a little bit more trivia for you, went on to make guitars for the likes of Phil Kagey, Zach Brown, Clint Black, David Crosby, Doyle Dykes, Leo Kotke, Paul McCartney, Graham Nash, and most notably, James Taylor. Currently, James Olson is on his 41st year of building and has built more than 1,500 instruments. So kind of a true tale of, of a luthier perseverance, if you will. Uh, so kudos to James Olson celebrating his 41st year and uh, he makes a hell of a guitar. Uh, probably more on him in a future Acoustic Tuesday episode. Speaking of future Acoustic Tuesday episodes, 
shall we take a sneak peek into next week. We are gonna look at a guitar aesthetic upgrade, an acoustic artist's second round on the show. Yes, yes, this acoustic artist will, will be making her second round. Uh, that'll help you whittle it down a little bit. And of course, a look at some Acoustic Tuesday viewers' guitar snows. Yes, your very own guitar snows will be featured next week on Acoustic Tuesday, which of course you can catch at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, make sure to tune in and, of course, share the show with your Guitar Geek buddies. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you want to share the show with your Guitar Geek buddies, please do so. The more, the merrier. I cannot wait to see you next Tuesday again at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Cheers and have the best acoustic week, acoustic life that you possibly can. I'll see you next week. Cheers. Heart, each night I suffer.